Good morning and welcome to The Glass right here on Voice of the People Television. My name is Esther Mwachuku. Quite a beautiful morning right here in the city of Lagos. First off, we'll go on with the headlines. On the headlines, we try to look at all the trending stories across selected national dailies, which are The Punch, These Day Live, The Nation, as well as Vanguard. These are the headlines from the newspapers that we're going to be taking this morning. Afterwards, as usual, we'll try to divest this issues. We pick up one of the trending stories across the national dailies and we go deep into it. And of course, there is always a guest, a seasoned, intelligent guest who will give us their perspective on the conversation right here on The Glass. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll start off with the headlines. Now for the Punch newspaper, major headline there, ASU protests as FG pays incomplete check of dues. Uh, the asset situation is still very much on there. And banks battle new NARA shortage ahead deadline. The CBN is insisting that January 31st will be the final deadline for the old NARA note to stop being a legal tender. So if you have the old NARA notes, do as, try as much as possible to get the new ones. Now, on this day, we have ahead of Buhari's inauguration, first commercial vessel birthed at $1.5 billion Lekki Deep Sea Port. That's a huge economic opportunity for Lagosians and Nigerians. So, as we anticipate the president's arrival in Lagos, a lot, of course, will definitely happen. And more into the program, we'll get to look at the economic implication of the president's arrival. Now, for Vanguard newspaper, major head Headline, why NDLEA EFCC must arrest prosecute Tinubu now and that is from the presidential campaign council of the People's Democratic Party I'm sure you recall that there's been a fracas between the All Progressives Congress and the PDP I'm sure this is in response to Festus Kayamo's uh, allegations and of course insisting that the EFCC and the ICPC must arrest the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress or rather sorry the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party he has brought up some allegations We'll be looking into the response of the People's Democratic Party's Presidential Campaign Council to what Festus Kemo said and, of course, the suit that he recently filed. While in the Nation newspaper, the major headline that we have there, Kogi Governor, my support for Tinubu unshaken. Uh, that is quite an interesting one. He said that... Um, despite the rumors across some media platforms that he has re, you know, rescinded his support for Tinubu. That is not true. And saying that he will sue the media houses who are propagating such news. So these are the trending stories on the national dailies, or rather the selected national dailies on the glass. And when we come back, I will introduce to you our guest, where we talk about you know, the response of the People's Democratic Party to uh, Festus Kiyamo, who is a spokesperson, the presidential campaign council, so for the All Progressives Congress. And of course, I will introduce him while we talk about it. And of course, we'll look at the economic aspect and the economic viability of President Muhammad Buhari's visit to Lagos in commissioning the deep sea port. That is a huge deal. I have via you know, via Zoom this morning. Uh, Barrister Fred Inzako, he is a lawyer, he is a civic advocate, a public analyst, a social commentator, and uh, he's also an economist. So he's all major, almost everything in one, and he will help us divest these issues that we are bringing up on the glass of this morning. Barrister, good morning and welcome to Voice of the People Television. Thank you, Sam. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, we Good are morning. glad to Good have you. you. We are glad to have you right here on the glass. Uh, first off, I want us to look at this particular, would I call it the quagmire or the fracas going on between uh, the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress. So uh, right now, the People's Democratic Party has responded and said that um, the EFCC must arrest, prosecute Tinubu now. And that is by the Presidential Campaign Council of the People's Democratic Party. You recall sometime last week, Festus Kayamu organized a World Press Conference where he brought up some 
allegations against uh, the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate. And he insisted that the ICPC and the EFCC, as well as, you know, every other economic crime body, should try to arrest within 72 hours. And when that response or rather when that ultimatum was not adhered to, he decided to sue them to court, including the case, uh, you know, the case with the People's Democratic Party presidential flag bearer in the person of um, Atiku Abubakar. Now, the PDP has responded and has asked the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to prosecute the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress in order to avoid worsening Nigeria's already bad situation. I need your reaction to this. You know, as a background to this, you recall that one Mr. Michael Achimugo, yes. whose, um, whose uh, personal integrity has been has been um, a very serious doubt and raised an uh, unfounded and frivolous and uh, funny allegations against um, Elijah Tika Obaka and President Muhammad Buhari, claiming that he was a privy to their private conversations, whereby they were alleged to have um, used the special purpose vehicles, um, registered companies and the rest to siphon money meant for the federal government. And uh, he claimed to be an aide to Elijah Tika Obaka, and that he was privy to such a very sensitive uh, discussion between the then number one and number two citizens um, from 1999. And um, it had come to the public um, uh, glare that the, so the, 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 the same Mr. Michael Achimogo um, has been described as a serial blackmailer and a man that lacks all modicum of integrity. That um, even as uh, he was alleging, making such allegations, there were two court cases pending against him, one on issues of, of a blackmail against a, a, a woman, and the other on issue of uh, obtaining under false pretenses against a business person. Both matters were already in court, even as we speak, have not been discharged. And uh, I mean, Tim has been described as um, as a man with um, without any atom of integrity uh, left in his uh, personality, such that whatever allegation he was making, was an allegation procured, paid for, by his paymasters, in which case he made himself available to blackmail Atiku Abubaka. Now, now, um, Mr. President Kiyamo has jumped up to, 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 the, to the public, you know, uh, puffing hot air and, uh, that um, obviously uh, could not achieve anything, um, uh, asking uh, EFCC, ICPC, and the Code of Conduct Bureau mm -hmm. to investigate uh, at Chicago Baka. But curiously, he did not ask them to investigate President Mohamed Buhari, I mean, sorry, President Amishiko Basanto, who was equally um, accused wrongly by Mr. Chimoku. So that simply exposed the antics of Kiyamo as being that of a politician, who, of course, is having difficulty marketing his own candidate, and he now wants to drag a Chico Obaka ahead of them in the mud. Nigerians have seen the truth, and Nigerians no longer want to even uh, put give any consideration to such allegations. But what PDP has done, the President of the Council of PDP, is also to show that uh, nobody has the monopoly of rascality um, by asking that um, Bolatinobu should, who is a presidential candidate of APC, should as well be investigated on account of uh, the exposed uh, dealings on narcotics, uh, which uh, in the United States, and as, uh, also on account of his uh, stupendous wealth, which has not been accounted for, for. Uh, because he is said to be very rich without owning a single company. So um, I think it's all politics. And I can tell you that it's all uh, dirty politics uh, stirred up by an inconsequential personality called Michael Achimugu. And of course, paid by his day masters who wanted to use him but Barista, Barista, hold on. Let, let me interject. Let me ask you this question, and I need an yeah. objective response. So we all understand yeah. that dirty politics is what is what plays when a huge platform for presidential campaigns come up. Already, this is expected. In as much as INEC had warned that campaigns should be issue based and not sentimental.
and it shouldn't be on a personal note. But for Festus Kayamo to organize a world press conference detailing all of these inflections against uh, the People's Democratic Party presidential flag bearer, and you know that your own cupboard is not so clean. Because the EFCC and the ICPC did not work into his 72-hour ultimatum, the reaction of the People's Democratic Party, did you think, do you think that it ought to have actually asked for this? Or rather, sue Michael Achimogu if what he said was not true. Why wasn't he sued? Why, why didn't they sue him to court rather than having to sue uh, the All Progressives Congress presidential flag bearer? It is not every dog that bites and that barks that you give attention. Um, PDP feels that uh, Michael Atimugu was um, a mad dog barking by the corner of the road. And then instead of uh, looking for the dog, you look for the owner of the dog. And uh, they felt the owner of that uh, mad dog is um, APC. So instead of um, wasting your time trying to, uh, to attend to a mad dog that is barking by the roadside, why not look for the owner who kept the mad dog by the roadside? So that he doesn't bite innocent people. I mean, he doesn't bite innocent people and uh, discredit uh, the entire environment. The, the, uh, so that's why uh, PDB tried to look at who is the owner of this mad dog that is parking uh, in a matter in a matter of and they identified <laughs> and they identified the mad dog to be ABC. So that is why they decided to go for the owner and say, look, you can't keep your dog by the roadside parking. Tell everybody when your own skeleton. Your own cupboard is full of dirty skeletons. And um, of course, even before Ajimugu started talking, recall that Alante Kobaka had um, asked uh, uh, his um, friend and uh, co presidential candidate, uh, Bolati to come clean with his uh, 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 experience in, um, in America mm -hmm. with uh, the drug issues. But I feel, and I agree with you, that the Peace Committee has asked the presidential candidates to to the line of integrity, peace, sure. and decorum in their campaigns. Mm -hmm. INEC has also equally asked the candidates to campaign on issues. Nigerians have asked the candidates to campaign on issues, mm -hmm. and they should, as much as possible, send out such messages down to their campaign councils. But now the question is, who is violating that score? Who is violating, who is breaching that need for to campaign on issues? And uh, PDP will easily tell you that APC is the one that is doing so because they are acting like a, a, a drowning man that is crossing on everything that he sees in order to keep afloat. The PDP feels that APC has run Nigeria aground and uh, messed up not only the economy, messed up the unity, security, and development of Nigeria, and that APC should rather apologize to Nigerians instead of asking them, instead of asking for, for Nigerians. To, to, to vote for them in 2023. And the APC felt, well, that uh, even if they have not done well, that they will still be on the ballot. And in a manner of speaking, started um, accusing PDP unduly. And I think they are the ones that stirred the honest nets. But I think that going forward, uh, the PDP is, uh, is uh, next deep on the screen Nigeria. PDP is working towards that rescue, uh, towards winning the election, so as to bring put Nigeria out of the road drums out of the suspects that the APC has pushed Nigeria into. And the PDP will henceforth not be interested in uh, talking to anybody who has kept his mad dog by the roadside. All right, Barissa, I would it will require you to stay online. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll look at the economic uh, implications. That is a positive angle to President Muhammadu Buhari's visit to Lagos to commission the Lekki Deep Sea Port. That is a huge billion-dollar project. It's something that Lagos, I would say, is one of the feats that will create employment opportunities and also economically open doors for investment and create more employment. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll delve into that. All right, welcome back. You are still on the glass. Now we want to look at the 
economic viability of the commissioning of the Lekki Deep Sea Port. That is a very huge deal. And I must say that the state government and the federal government all in one is really anticipating what this project would be and how it's going to help create opportunities for Nigerians in general, considering uh, the quagmire that we have in terms of poverty, inflation rate. Everyone is also anticipating what this intends or rather what this portends for Nigerians. Now the president is coming today and then uh, we intend to, there are other projects he intends to commission uh, within Lagos State. At the, at the moment traffic is going to be diverted to accommodate his arrival. But the thing we also want to consider is this. Some persons may say that this is coming rather late. Some persons may say better late than never. But with the commissioning of this project, actually, we must say that it is an improvement on most of the progress that this current administration has made when it comes to giving Nigeria the purview with its international counterparts, when it comes to um, um, international negotiations and diplomatic uh, commissions between viable nations economically. Now, the commissioning of this project, like I said, is already resounding. It's going to be the talk of the town and negotiations and Nigerians are anticipatory of what this aspect of is going to be for, you know, a lot of people who have been looking ahead to this. Barrister, let's look at the economic viability of this commissioning today. We all know how there's this huge poverty situation in this part of the world. Uh, Nigerians are actually, now that the campaigns are on and the elections are coming forward, that is one of the crucial factors that is lacking. There is no employment opportunities, either because there are no jobs or lack of job creation, or the job creation available are very few, and you have a lot of people who need those jobs, which of course are not available. Do you think Think this commissioning will be one of those things that will create, you know, bridge that lacuna already in existence. Well, it is um, a very good project. is um, is a very typical example of a successful public-private sector partnership mm -hmm. because the government and the private sector are involved. Now, the project. Is, um, ho is, is, is hope to come on stream, and uh, now that it's being commissioned, what I don't know is whether it has actually been completed to the extent of taking off in its operations. But at least the commissioning indicates that um, at least it has uh, gone um, 80 to 90 percent uh, completion. Mm -hmm. But my worry about this um, on, on the side of economics, it is very good, it will create employment. It will also ensure that um, the resources of uh, of the deep sea is uh, utilized adequately to help to decongest their papa port and um, the Tinkan Island port. But my worry is that it is still in Lagos. Okay. Already, Lagos is over over congested. Already, now this one is Lakey. Lakey. If you go to the Lakey axis, you will know and see that. The residential development in Lakey, the airport that is fast coming, the Dangote refinery that is coming up in Lakey, now that will be complemented equally by the deep sea port, shows you that that axis of um, of uh, Lagos State will equally witness the kind of congestion over time that we see in Ampapa exits, uh, which has messed up the environment um, and the system. Or the geographical system of Ampapa. Well, it is said to be it is is is, is said to be a, a state of the art facility and actually the largest seaport, one of the biggest in West Africa, which of course is expected to revolutionize the way goods are transported and traded in the country. So, in as much as we, okay, go ahead, Barrister. Okay. That is the positive side of the project. The, the flip side to it, which is uh, the environmental side and the negative side, is that it will add to the congestion of Lagos. And uh, and uh, uh, when we talk about about um, spreading out investment all around the country, mm -hmm. there are many other locations where we have deep seas, where we should have as well sighted the ports. In, in, in the, 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 the ports in Wari, the ports in Porakot, the ports in, um, in many other locations across the country, many of them that are already in existence are left to be underutilized and everything is happening in Lagos. So that is the only flip side to it because 
um, if we talk about spreading out investment, whereby you don't concentrate in only one area. And that is why Lagos is gradually becoming a very massive urban slum because everybody wants to go to Lagos because that is where you go to find employment mm -hmm. because of the congestion of all the infrastructure in Lagos. We recall that even the major oil companies that are operating in the Nadia region will have their headquarters in Lagos until there had to be a struggle by both the people and a policy by government that they should relocate their headquarters to the regions where they operate. Now, if everything is congested in Lagos, Lagos is not the only city in Nigeria. That's the terrible aspect of it. And before you know it, that sanity that you see in Lake, of course, Lake has already become terribly congested because of if you go to or if you go on the road of Lake, the 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 artery roads are not developed. Only that major express road that runs Lake to Abair that is developed. And even the project is going at a very snail speed. So for projects like this to be cited in that area, it means that government has to also step up in the provision of critical road infrastructure and other basic infrastructural requirements, light, um, roads I have mentioned, and um, all those other things that will make life meaningful for the people of that area. You cannot run from Shagamu to Leki because mm -hmm. you have gotten a job in there. You have to go and reside very close to where you are working. We expected that the rail system should have extended down to that place so that, I mean, it will help to offload the huge, massive number of people that are going to work in that corridor. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that while the private sector is, is doing its own, the public sector, which is the government, that is supposed to provide the critical infrastructure, is lagging behind. And that is the only challenge that I see with such projects. And going forward, I have always asked that there has to be even development of all parts of the country. And that is what Elijah Tiko Abubakar, the candidate of PDP, has always, been, has always preached, that he will try to be even. All right, Barista, thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Barista Fred Rizako, he's always very implicit, very vast, and he understands politics, he understands economic analysis. Anytime spot on Barrister Fred Nzako has his way of helping to, you know, flesh out most of these trending stories. Barrister, I really appreciate you being part of the glass this morning Thank on you. Voice of the People television. We will definitely continue to incorporate you as the program continues on subsequent editions. All right, Barrister. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, quite an interesting Obviously. segment there, like we just hinted to you. This is because the president is on, is going to come to Lagos today, or rather will be arriving in Lagos today for the commissioning of the Lekki Deep Sea Port. Already one of the huge uh, vessels that have birthed, it's about one point something billion dollars. It's one of the biggest in West Africa. And the idea is for it to revolutionize the way trading, export, and import will be done right here. However, the Paris has explained that the negative implication of that is considering how congested legal state is at the moment is the state going to accommodate the huge influx this activity is going to you know incorporate in this part of the world that is a question barrister asks and i think that is something that we all need to respond to so right here you can actually send in your comments and tell us what do you think the state government can do to make life better especially along the axis where this lucky deep sea port is and at the same time how will they help create a sense of what i call it space of vacuum that would enable other investments take place because it seems that Lagos intends to continue to be the major commercial hub in West Africa. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back. And that is it on the glass right here on Voice of the People television. I promise you the content right on here is meant to keep you informed, also meant to keep you abreast and give you, you know, a larger perspective to most of the issues across various segments of the Nigerian polity. That's what we do right here on the glass. My name is Esther Wanchpian Mose. Thanks to the crew for this particular production. Do have yourself an amazing day.